American financier and paedophile Jeffrey Epstein is back in the news, despite having died four years ago. And his reappearance might be about to ruin Christmas for an awful lot of powerful people. A US judge has ordered the release of the names of more than 170 of Epstein's associates. The names were all included in filings made in a lawsuit brought by Epstein victim Virginia Dufre against Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell is the daughter of disgraced British media tycoon and fraudster Robert Maxwell and is currently serving a 20-year prison term for sex trafficking crimes she committed with Epstein. After that trial, the names were placed under a court-ordered seal, along with hundreds of files of evidence, all of which is now being made public. Many of those named are likely to be people who worked for Epstein or Maxwell in some capacity. And Prince Andrew is also likely to make a reappearance. That's because the testimony of a woman called Johanna Sjöberg is to be released. She accused Prince Andrew of groping her in 2001, an allegation Buckingham Palace called categorically untrue. But the release of 40 further documents of evidence from Sjöberg could cause the disgraced prince even greater discomfort. In 2022, Andrew paid a reported £12 million to Geoffrey to settle a civil case she brought against him. That's right, the king's younger brother wrote a cheque for £12 million to a woman he claimed he'd never met. The judge has given the people on the list until the 1st of January to appeal the release of their names. Adalia, do you think Prince Andrew will be sweating about this new release of names and documents? I mean, if he wasn't sweating before, um, which according to him he wasn't, he will now. Obviously, it's hard to, to know exactly what the implications of this story will be because the names haven't actually been officially released yet. Um, I would be very curious to see um, who is on there. When it comes to, to Prince Andrew, I mean, look, on the one hand, I don't think there are many people that are very conflicted on what they think uh, Andrew's implication here is. Uh, I think he's almost sort of dug his own grave with that one. I think certainly the new evidence that could appear uh, as a result of this unsealing of documents could demonstrate a pattern of behavior that becomes very difficult for him to refute. But ultimately, I think most people know where they stand on this issue. And certainly a lot of people don't necessarily believe Andrew's story, uh, um, description of events. When King Charles took over from the late Queen, there was some indication that perhaps he was going to take a more hardline approach to, to Andrew. He, you know, evicted him out of one of his palaces or whatever. Um, and we all shed a tear um, for Andrew on that day. Um, and it that seemed to suggest that there was going to be that, you know, the kind of soft spot that the the late queen had for him had maybe that phase had been over, but that has now been pretty much reneged and it's, and you know, Prince Andrew is very much back in the fold. And so for me, the statement that matters to me at this point, when it comes to the specific story of, of Andrew, which is what is, you know, our, our head of state, what do our head of state, how do our head of state deal with revelations such as this? As far as I'm concerned, that statement has has already been made that in the face of an, a crisis of legitimacy um, when it comes to to Andrew's suspected involvement with Epstein, um, the palace chose to stand by Andrew. And if you're going to believe, you know, Omid Scobie's recent book um, covering sort of the Meghan Harry royal family affair, they decided that they were going to essentially try and make a pariah out of Harry and Meghan in order to try and distract from the fact um, that they are not going to take any action against Andrew, despite, um, you know, the, let me not say too much because it's all alleged at this point, I guess, but despite his alleged involvement with a man like Jeffrey Epstein. I have to say, Dahlia, I, I find the prospect of a potential libel case being brought by Prince Andrew against yourself on Avara Media rather amusing. Unlikely, but I'm I'm very glad and gratified to see the professionalism you just showed there. Uh, and uh, I have to say, I was rather disappointed that I didn't see more of Randy Andy in the final series of The Crown. I wonder why. <laughs> 